So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we're going over a quick topic test with a collection of some GCSE exam style questions on sketching graphs at higher level. Now a copy of the questions for you to have attempt at before watching through this video is available for you to download by clicking on the link in the description which I strongly recommend you do to see how much understanding you have on this topic. Now, as always, there is a copy of the test paper in the description below for you to have an attempt at either before or while watching this video. So let's get started on question one. Now, question one is, again, based on a very popular topic that comes in GSCC papers, uh, which is refers to recognizing graph shapes and matching them up to possible equations. Now, sometimes the graphs are very, very similar. Sometimes they can be massively different. And it's just a case about picking out the key bits of properties. Now let's have a look at these ones. So here we've got four graphs and if I just zoom out from this and we can see those four and we've got four equations. So one equation will match up with one graph. Sometimes they do have an additional equation just to throw you off to make sure that you're not just simply guessing. So looking at the first one, we recognize that here we've got a single X and a single Y. Now with these types of questions, you want to make sure that Y is a subject. So if I do a bit of rearranging, I get three Y equals four minus two X. Then I want to make y the subject, so I divide everything by 3, and I end up with something that looks like this. Now this is going to be a straight line graph, because it involves single x's and single y's, and it's going to have a negative gradient. So I'm looking for an y-intercept of positive 4 over 3. So here I'm looking for a straight line diagonal line with a negative gradient, so it's going to be going downwards, with a positive y-intercept, and that's going to be this one here so I can join that point up with this one so here the second one we've got again another straight line graph but this time it's got a positive gradient and it's got a, a negative y intercept so that's going to be this bottom one here in regards to the third one here we've got reciprocal graph and that is going to be this one so it looks a bit more complicated so it's going to be more likely to be the most complicated graph and then finally we've here we've got a parabola and that quadratic, so that's going to be a U shape with a negative Y intercept, which is the one that we have left. So they're the ones that you should have matched up. So now let's move on to question two. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And it says that a joiner uses this graph to work out how much uh, to charge for jobs. And 2A says work out the fixed cost. Now the fixed cost is always going to be the Y intercept. So for this, because obviously if he's working zero hours, how much money is he going to get? Just by simply walking through the door and it's going to be the wine set, which is £20. So moving on to question 2B, it says work out the joiners, uh, how much the joiner charges per hour. Now for this, let's just have a look at a point which sits flush between two readable values from both axes. And I would say this one here is going to be probably the most nicest. And you can see, that, see there that for four hours, it's a total charge of £120. Now, the key thing to remember is that this includes the fixed charge. So it's four hours plus that fixed charge. So here I've got four um, times H, which is going to be the hourly rate, plus 20 equals £120. But if I do a bit of rearranging, Take the 20. Oh, don't know why I'm dividing there. So let's just get rid of that. And we minus the 20. And we get four hours is going to be a hundred pounds. And so then we divide by four. And we get one hour is going to be 25 pounds. So there the answer then is going to be 25 bucks. Then moving on to question three, it says that here is a, this is a sketch of y equals x cubed plus k. The graph passes through to 11, work out the coordinate of point A. So point A is basically the y-intercept. Now from this, our y-intercept is going to be k. So what the question is asking is to find k. So here we've got y equals x cubed plus k, and we've got a coordinate of 2, 11. Now with this, what we want to do is swap this coordinate 2 for k, uh, so for x, and this 11 for y. And if we substitute it into this formula here, we get 11 equals 2 cubed plus k. 
then we can solve this for k so i've got 11 equals 8 plus k so k equals 3 so that means that this y-intercept is 3 which means that a is going to be at with a y-ordinate 3. So moving on to question b it says point b has an x-ordinate of minus 2 work out the y-ordinate of b so from this what we know is that the equation of that line is now going to be x cubed plus 3 because we now know the value of k so then from this what we'll then want to do is substitute x equals minus 2 so when x equals minus 2 I get y equals minus 2 cubed plus 3 minus 2 cubed is minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2 which is minus 8 plus 3 which gives me an answer of minus 5 and there is my final answer now if I wanted to write it as a coordinate which it doesn't ask for but it will therefore be written like so moving on to question four it says that the graph shows the relationship between speed and s miles per hour and time t hours of a car traveling a fixed distance and the question is asking for part a write down the speed when the car when the uh, when the time taken is 90 minutes now 90 minutes in time is 1.5 hours so if I look at 1.5 which is here and I draw a line and it's really important that you do draw those lines because that in itself will be worth a mark well as it's only worth one mark it's quite stingy and so here the answer then is going to be 20. It then says work out the fixed distance now as mentioned in the previous example fixed distance is the y intercept and we don't know what that is so for this what we need to do is kind of use the formula so for the fixed distance we know that d equals speed times time and if i pick two nice coordinates and let's just go for that one there or we could go for any of them so you could pick and that one's a nice one that one's nice and this one's also nice and we multiply out so you can use any of those so let's just go for this one here so here we've got the speed as being 20 the time being 1.5 and that gives us an answer of 30. Then moving on to C, it says work out the time taken when the speed is 90 miles per hour. Give your answer in minutes. So for this, we need to use the distance speed time. And we know that time equals distance divided by speed. So here we know that the distance is 30. And we know that the speed is 90. So if we do the calculations, it's going to be a third of an hour. And a third of an hour, if I multiply that by 60, equals 20 minutes. And so I can just write 20 minutes just there. Moving on to question five, it says this is a sketch of a graph of y equals 3x plus 1 on the same grid. Uh, on the same grid, sketch the graph y equals 3x plus 5. So this mark here is 1. Now we should recognize that these two graphs are going to be parallel. So what I need to do is draw a parallel line that is just slightly up. Now you should be using a ruler, but I would say that should be close. If you drew it with a ruler, what your graph should look like. Now, so, that's, so it should be parallel and above. Or the second one for B says on the same grid sketch the graph y equals x plus 1 so this is going to have a smaller gradient or a lower gradient I should say to gradient and it's going to be lower because the y intercept is lower and so we just need to do something like what you could do is you could imagine y equals x it's actually going to have the same exception and same y intercept as one line so if you imagine that green line is y equals x then what we then want to do is draw a line which goes through this point here look very very messy that there is e. hopefully you can find a way of differentiating it maybe by labeling so if i label this one a this one b usually sometimes they will ask you to do that Moving on to question six, it says in the following graphs, half the graph is not drawn, complete the graphs. So if this is just a case of recognizing the graph shape, so for the first one, we should have something that looks like this. For this this is a, represents a parabola. We want to draw something that looks like that. But then next one, we've got a cubic graph and it has a y-intercept of minus two, which is there. So it means that it go, then goes down like so. 
And here we've got y equals minus x, so the line goes down. Like that. Quite a nice question, that one. Then we move on to question seven. It says that a is the graph of y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3, and c is the graph of y equals 3x plus 2, uh, 3 rather, and it says work out the equation of graph b. Now, the equation of graph B is going to be basically at the interception of A and C. So what we need to do is join and make these questions because that B, um, those two sort of parabolas do meet up. So it meets up there and this one meets the other one there. So for this, what we need to do is to make these two equations equal to each other so here we've got x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 3x plus 3 and what i'll try and do is just convert this into one equation so if i take all of this equation over to this side we get x squared plus x minus 6 y equals and this now is my equation of b so it's going to be y equals x squared plus x minus 6. There's several ways in which you could have got this, uh, either by factorising or finding the roots, etc. But ultimately, you would have got to, we should have got up to x squared plus x minus 6, which would have given you the correct answer and obviously the two marks. Now, moving on to our last question, it says the quadratic shows the symmetrical, uh, it is some show, read that again, the quadratic shown is symmetrical about the line of x equals minus 2. D is the reflection of A in the line of symmetry right down the coordinates of D. So for this, what we need to do is basically find this point here. Now, just using the lines of symmetry, we know that this point here is our vertex. If we count how many, the distance from there to there, and we've got three to minus two, so that's gonna be going past minus five. So then this distance here is also going to be minus 5 because it is symmetrical. So minus 2 minus 5 is minus 7. Now it's going to have the same y-ordinate as the reflection point. So it's going to be minus 7, 16. Then for B, it then says point C has an x-coordinate of 1. Work out the missing y-ordinate. Now for this, we do need to have some knowledge of completing the square. Now when we have, when we factorise with respect to completing the square, which looks like this, that the minimum point or maximum point has the, the coordinate of minus a, b. Now, in this particular question, a is minus 2 and b is minus 9. So therefore, a is going to be 2 and b is going to be minus 9 because minus a, minus 2, both of them are negative. So that means the positive version is both going to be positive. So then if I then substitute this into this, I then get x minus, so plus 2 squared minus 9, and that's the equation of the line. And then from this, I want to substitute x equals 1. So when x equals 1, I can substitute that in. I'm going to get 3 squared minus 9, which equals 0. So my y ordinate is going to be 0.